Ranger Bob. Yeah, he did that right across to him. We're going to end up going all the way up to the other end of the lake and back. So it'll take us around 35 to 45 minutes or so. Mostly depending on what we see and how long I talk. So we'll just have to wait and see because every trip's usually a little bit different. But a lot of times we'll see quite a bit out here. A lot of times we'll see deer coming down to the water this time of day. So watch for them. Let me know if you see one because I'm usually not the first one to see them. We'll stop and let everybody get a look. Um, a lot of times, too, we'll see ducks or geese or other birds out here around the water. Sometimes we'll see fish and turtles and things of that sort. So we'll just have to keep our eyes open and see what's out. If you guys see anything you want to talk about or if you have any questions or anything, feel free to ask. You can get up and walk around while we're out here if you want to. Just please don't everybody come to the front of the boat all at once. <laughs> One thing I'll start out telling you about right here as we start out, if you look around the edge of the lake, as go up through here you'll see there's you'll see there's a lot of dead trees down in the water especially up here in front of us to the right uh, most of what we're seeing out here are pine trees that have been knocked over in storms at one time or another every now and then we'll have a big snowstorm or a windstorm or something that'll come through and knock a bunch of trees down but it's getting mostly the pines because a lot of them are pretty old and weak they're just not able to stand up to the weather very well now, the only trees that we cut or clear away are the ones that fall across the roads and trails up here. So these out here in the lake and out in the woods will stay where they are until they rot. That's just part of the natural cycle of things though, because every now and then a storm comes through and knocks down a few trees. But then over the following years, new plants and new trees come back to take their place. We're starting to see a lot of that up here now. And as you come back up here over the next 50 or 100 years or so, you'll see a lot more of it. So something to watch for in the future. Okay, let's head on up around the corner here a little bit. How big is the lake? About 44 acres, all told. We'll be able to see just about all of it here in just a minute. fish and I'll tell you about that here in just a minute. All right folks, everybody act like you're having a good time. Wave it to folks on the dam. This area we're in right now is the deepest part of the lake. Right over here next to the middle of the dam, it's about 26 feet deep over here. So it's about as deep there as the boat is long. The average depth for the lake though is only around eight feet or so, so most of it's fairly shallow. And uh, the water's not real clear today, but once we get on the upper end of the lake a little ways, we'll be able to see the bottom a few places up there. This dam over here was built back in 1916. They built the lake up here on top of the mountain to serve as a water supply for the city of Kingsport. We used to get all of our drinking water out of this lake, but we had to quit using this in 1944 because we were taking too much out. So now we get our water from the South Fork of the Holston River on the other side of the mountain down in this direction. Now if the city were to start taking water out of here right now at the rate we use it today, this lake would be dry in less than a week. Can give you some idea how much water we use now and how much the city's grown over the years. The lake's about 44 acres in size, so you can see one end, but one end of it back here behind us where we started. And it goes up here in front of us a little farther than you can see up that way, but we're gonna see just about the whole thing today. Um, there are fish in the lake. We have largemouth bass, bluegills, and catfish. And we allow fishing if you're under 16 or over 55. Through the end of, uh, or from the 1st of September to the end of May, you can fish on Monday or Saturday mornings from 8.30 in the morning until 12 noon from the dam over here. And there's some pretty good fishing up here sometimes, so it's a good place to bring the kids up and let them try their hand at it. But uh, it is real limited fishing. But like I say, because of that, it's, uh, it's pretty good up here a lot of times. No carp. I heard somebody ask if there's any carp in here. No, there's no carp in the lake. No musky, no pike, nothing like that. It's bluegills, red ear sunfish, warmouth sunfish, largemouth bass, bluegills, 
yellow bullhead catfish, and mosquito fish. As far as I know, that's the only fish in the lake up here. One thing you will notice as we go up through here, there are a lot of water lilies around the edge of the lake. And a lot of what we're seeing up here right now are the bullhead, or not the bullhead lilies, but the uh, water shield. They're the ones with these little leaves floating on the surface of the lake over here to the right. And uh, they're real common up here. They're real thick around the edge of the lake over a lot of the lake. But they're a relatively new introduction to the park, we think. They, we think they've only been around for the last six or eight years or so. So in that amount of time, they have done very well. They've spread a lot. They have a real pretty flower on them, but it's kind of small. It's only about the size of the end of my pinky finger. So it's pretty small, but it's a real pretty dark red color. There are still a few of them that are blooming right now. So if you get a chance, you can look around at some of these out here on the end of the dam, especially, and uh, may be able to find some flowers on those. Real pretty flower on them. Another water lily that's real common up here is one called the bullhead lily. They're the bigger ones that we see in the back of some of these coves up through here. And also out in the middle of the lake up here in front of us, we'll see some of the bullhead lilies up there. They have a much bigger uh, flower. It's about an about, um, inch and a half or two inches across, about the size and shape of a golf ball, real bright yellow. We'll see some of those up close here in just a minute. Not right now, no. It may come to it at some point in the future. Right now, about the only thing we do is uh, we'll cut a lane for the boat to go through every now and then. Other than that, they don't really cause a problem for us, though. I want to point out too as we ride up through here. This lake right up here looks a whole lot different from any of the TVA lakes that you're used to seeing around here. Things like Patrick Henry and Boone. Those are more for uh, flood control and um, water storage basically for, for generating power. But this lake up here uh, isn't used for anything anymore so we don't really control the water level. The water level fluctuates up and down as much as a couple of feet over the course of the year depending on how dry the weather is in the summer. But other than that, it doesn't really go up and down anywhere near as much as the TVA lakes. Um, Boone and Patrick Henry in particular will go up and down 40 or 50 feet over the course of the year. Because this one stays pretty close to the same level all the time, that's the reason we start seeing the water lilies and cattails and things like that growing around the edge of the lake up here and the reason you don't see them in, in Patrick Henry. Yes? Um, when it like, rains over here, does the water level raise? It does, yeah. Yeah, we depend mostly on rainfall to keep the lake full up here. We're on top of the mountain, so there's no river that runs into this lake. There's only, there's three or four small uh, wet weather streams that run in here, but they depend, you know, during a dry summer like what we're having this year, they dry up, so it's mostly rainfall that keeps the lake full. We've not, yeah, we've not had a whole lot of rain this summer, so that's the reason the water level is down as far as it is right now. Over here to the right, though, beside of us, uh, is one of the areas where the beavers have been doing some work over the years. If you look over there in the edge of the woods, there's a dead tree lying on the ground with no bark on it. You can still see the, the tree trunk is kind of light colored. That's one that the beavers cut down about three or four weeks ago, about four weeks ago, I guess now. And uh, most of the time when the beavers cut down a tree, they don't leave anything but the stump after a couple of weeks. Usually they take the whole thing. But they usually cut smaller trees, maybe an inch or two in diameter. This one up here is a little bit bigger than that though, so what they've done is they uh, ate the bark off the tree, off the trunk of the tree. They've taken some of the smaller limbs and twigs out of the top of the tree. It looks like they're gonna leave the rest of it there. So we see them do that sometimes with some of, those, some of the bigger trees like that one. Beavers aren't quite perfect lumberjacks either, so every now and then when they cut down a tree, it doesn't fall where it's supposed to. If you look up here in front of us to the right, there's a dead tree hanging out over the water at an angle. If you follow it back down to the stump, you can see the notch in the bottom where the beavers tried to cut that one down. Well, they did cut it down, but when they cut it down, instead of falling in the lake like it was supposed to, it got hung in another tree and didn't come all the way down. So that one was wasted effort on their part. They didn't get to use any of that one. We'll see the beaver lodge up here in this cove right in front of us, so we'll keep an eye out for that as we go up through here. Yes. Um, These are white-tailed deer, of course, which is the only kind around here right now. They're 
real common here in the park and they're getting to be a lot more common in areas outside the park now. And they're getting to the point now where some folks are starting to consider them a nuisance. Of course, everybody loves to come up here and see the cute little deer out in the woods or the cute little deer in the cage, but when you get home and there's one eating your garden in the backyard or if one runs across the interstate and in front of you while you're doing 70, some folks decide they're not very cute after that. Mm -hmm.